Would you stand with me, please? 671 in the blue hymnal, Rescue the Perishing. Amen. 671. We'll sing the first, the third, and the last. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. Weep for the erring one, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful. By a loving heart, waken by kindness, cords that are broken will vibrate once more. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful. And uh, let's have the Bach family come and sing a couple of songs for us. You want to introduce them, uh, Brother Bach? All right, come on up here. <clears throat> All right, so we're the Bach family, and we, Amy, this is my wife right here. She's not my daughter, amen? <laughs> um, we're not that far apart. It's just when you have 15 children, it'll turn your head gray, you know. But uh, we're um, missionaries working in remote regions, and I'm also involved in aviation. And so Daniel, how many of you met Daniel, our son? Okay, he's number three. And the first three boys are all in the ministry, and I thank God for that. That's the grace of God. And we have some others that are praying and looking to the Lord. And, uh, you know, serving the Lord is an opportunity. Amen. 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 And so that's what these boys believe, and that's what we believe. And so I'm going to just let them give their own names. Uh, I'm used to giving Paul, John, Daniel, Sarah, Susanna, Gregory, Mark, and Jeremiah, Sam, Christian, Joel, Charity, Josiah, Joseph, and Elizabeth. But they just one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, go, go right ahead, y'all. My name is Sarah. My name is Susanna. My name is Mark. I'm Samuel. My name is Christiana. My name is Joel. My name is Charity. I'm Josiah. I'm Joseph. I'm Elizabeth. <laughs> Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled, grace, grace. 
I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather have Jesus than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand than to be a king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy than to be a king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords to fairer than lilies of rarest bloom. He's sweeter than honey from out of the comb. He's all that my hungering spirit needs. I'd rather have Jesus and let him lead than to be a king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords to Was your family with you when you came here last? Some of them. Some of them. Okay. God yes. bless you. Good. Appreciate All right. you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you very much. Well, we're delighted to be with you this evening here at Silvery Lane Baptist Church. And uh, it's our delight and privilege to be here and want to share a little bit about what we do. Uh, we live in Alaska and we go into Canada. From where we live, we can cross the border, and then we go out and we give out gospel literature into native villages. So I write these tracts, and we put them in the doors of people. Uh, this one's how to have security for eternity. And that basically starts in Genesis, and it goes all the way to Romans, and it covers the subject of salvation. And that's what people need. People need the Lord. And this is our great privilege to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ because he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we believe that. And uh, you know the song, my house is full, but the fields are empty. Well, you know, we could turn that around in America. A lot of places the house of God is empty and the fields are full of people that should be in church. And uh, Things are changing all across our land. But we can't let that discourage us. Because if you're here tonight, you have priorities in your life. And that's important to have God's priorities. And so we're going to look at the right sense of values. Now, this is your missions month. 
And missions is what Jesus taught us to be all about after we get saved. The mission is the world. And so God so loved the world, he gave his own son for the mission. And we need to be willing to give of ourselves. And you know, the greatest privilege that God can give a parent is to send a child into his mission. And we believe that. Now, if you will, take your Bible and turn to the book of Luke chapter number 12. Luke chapter 12. <clears throat> you know, our goal should be to lay up all we can for heaven. That should be our goal. Jesus taught us to make that our goal. What did Jesus say? Lay up for yourselves what? Treasure somewhere. Anybody know where? In heaven. In heaven. Now how can we do that? Well, they say you can't take it with you when you go. There's no U-Hauls following hearse. Well, how are we going to get our treasures in heaven? Now, how many folks here believe you're going to live forever on this earth and you don't age and you won't die? Well, anybody like that? Well, you, nobody believes that. Well, if we die, then we know if Jesus is true and we believe he is and the resurrection is a real deal and Jesus, everything he taught is true, then he said to lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Now, Luke chapter 12, we see a young man who's concerned about his earthly inheritance. He's greatly concerned about that. And he wants Jesus to solve a dilemma. And you know what that dilemma is? He said in verse 13, Luke 12, 13, And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. Now that's his earthly inheritance. Okay? In verse 15, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not of the abundance of the things which he possesseth. So what's important to Jesus? Well, it's not what you own. In verse 16, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. In verse 19, and I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy knees, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Now I want you to look at verse 21. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So what is Jesus saying here? We need to have the right sense of values. Not the accumulation of wealth because Jesus said a man's life consisteth not of the abundance of things he possesseth. But lay up Treasure, where? In heaven. In heaven. And so somehow in life, we need to get Jesus in the equation. We need to find his will. And so the best use of life is to invest it in God. Amen. To believe he is. And that he is a rewarder of what? Them that diligently seek him. And so either this is true or we might as well just go home. You see. And so we need to find and fulfill our stewardship. That's what it's all about. Finding and fulfilling our stewardship in life. So now let's turn to Ephesians chapter number one, if you will. Ephesians chapter one. <clears throat> 
Ephesians 1, notice in this epistle written by the Apostle Paul, Paul begins with Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And so the first thing is we live by God's will. This is our stewardship. Now this is very elementary, okay? We live by God's will. Secondly, notice Paul addresses this letter to the faithful. So somehow we serve the saints. This is our stewardship. Number one, live by God's will. Number two, somehow serve the saints. And then notice in verse two, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, experience grace. This is our stewardship. We need to experience God's grace. Now my wife's saying about grace. We need to experience that grace. And then receive God's blessing. His blessings. Look at verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath what? Blessed us with all spiritual blessings. We're talking about the stewardship of life and having a right sense of values. We got to receive the grace of God and receive the blessings of God who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. In verse four, do what God chooses. God has a choice for all of us and we need to do what he chooses for us according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Do you realize before the world began, God chose that you, every, every person on this earth, would put faith in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He chose that. It's God, God doesn't want anyone to perish. But that all should come to repentance. And this tells us God's choice. And we need to do what God chooses. Except the Lord Jesus Christ is our savior. This is what God chooses for us. Get into the family of God. It talks about the adoption of children in verse 5. And we need to live for God's good pleasure. Look at verse number 5 in the last part. It says, according to the good pleasure of his will. And so God is telling us to live for his pleasure. This is what he wants. And for his glory. This is what, why we were made. It says to the praise of the glory of his grace. And experience his rich grace in verse 7. Get wisdom in verse 8. Find and do his will in verse 9. And maximize our heavenly inheritance. Now how are we going to do that? We're all going to die. We're all going to stand before God. So... Wouldn't it be wisest to focus on our heavenly inheritance? Because we leave everything else. You know, before people die, they cash out. They just, everything starts going, right? Can't take it. So what's going to really last? I know you've heard this before, but it, soon this life will be passed only what's done for Christ will last. It'll be worth it all when we see Christ. And so, the right sense of values is finding and fulfilling our stewardship. Now, how do we do this? We got to choose, we have to choose life's wisest choices. That's what we have to do. In Revelation 3, Verse 18, the Lord says, I would you would buy gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. So somehow we have to invest in what God calls gold. But it's not physical gold. It's gold tried in the fire. Job said, when I... When I'm tried, I'll come forth as what? Gold. So the Lord wants us to invest in what he's concerned about. And what is that? The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that wins souls is still wise. 
And so the wisest use of your life is investing in others coming to Christ and ministering to others. And so we read in the book of Proverbs, there is that maketh himself rich yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor yet hath great riches. Don't forget that. Amen. We can't forget that. In other words, sell out lock, stock, and barrel and tell people the everlasting gospel. That is a wise investment of life. Now, I don't have another translation in my library, but today I looked for whatever reason at what other translations say about this verse. You know what they say? Instead of saying, there is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. It says, there is, most of them say this, there is that pretends to be rich and hath nothing. That is the most terrible translation that you could possibly have in that verse. And so, the Lord wants us to invest life for eternity. Proverbs 13, 7. Brother, it is the worst massacre of the King James Bible I've ever seen. In that verse, another place it says, pretends to be wealthy. There is uh, that pretends to be wealthy. That has nothing to do with that verse. It's saying there is that maketh himself rich and hath nothing. In other words, I can invest in earthly sphere and get to heaven and have absolutely nothing at the judgment seat if I'm born again. And there is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. You know what it says? There is that pretends to be poor and gets rich. That, that, that makes no sense. And so, investing in in what's important. And that's invest life for eternity. Amen. And so I'm trying to convince you what I try to convince my kids, my young people. The wisest use of your life is serving the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not how much money we get, how, what kind of car we drive. God may bless you with a nice car. God may give you money. But that is not the most important thing. Now you just covered missions month. Let me encourage you. Your missions program is a good investment. It's a wise investment. It's a biblical investment. And if you're involved, don't feel like you're missing out on anything. You are laying up for yourself treasures in heaven. Because when someone gets saved, guess what? Where do they go? To heaven. Does, does the Lord treasure people? Yes. And if you're a part of that process, you're laying up treasures in heaven. And that is important, you see. And so this is the wisest investment. You see, the wisest investment is one's faith, which is a gift in Christ, the pearl of great price. Faith in the Lord. Now God gives us faith. Everything we have, God gives us. Everything. Amen? He gives us everything. And so God puts faith in us. And we exercise that faith. And we accept the Lord Jesus Christ when we exercise faith. You see, faith is a gift. And it comes by the word of God. And God gave us the word. Amen. And so, the worst investment is in the temporal and excluding the eternal. Do you know how many people, we're talking about a man here in the book of Luke, who only invested in the temporal. God says, thou fool. You wasted your life. You know what he said? I'm going to build barns for me, myself, and I. That's all you're going to find in that, that passage. I, 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 I. It's all about him. 
It's not about others. And so, faith. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11. We're just going to kind of zoom through here just a little bit. Investing faith. That's investing in what you cannot see. How many people invest in what they can't see? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. That's in what you do see. You see, you invest faith when you see the substance of something God made. You invest faith that there's a creator behind that substance. There's a creator behind that bird. There's a creator behind that mountain. There's a creator behind that flower. I'm putting faith in the substance in a sense that it came from a creator. And that's a wise investment of faith. Amen. But to deny that God made this world and universe, that's a sad, sad miss. The people, you, do you realize America now has 25% of the people in America do not have faith now. That's terrible. And so, in the book of Mark, it says, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And so, we're looking at investing in faith. Abel gave his best by faith. We find that in Hebrews 11. Enoch was a friend of God by faith. We find faith pleases God and faith listens to God. We believe he's there, so we listen to him. Faith is by listening to the Lord. My sheep hear my voice. You want to know where you find God's voice? Right here. And so you put faith in the voice of God. And believe that. And so we find faith causes a person to go and serve the Lord and do his will. Faith causes us to look to the Lord. And so we have to invest faith if we're going to please God. And so this gives a person the right sense of values. They value faith. We need to value faith. And so, have you heard the acronym DINK? You ever heard of that? DINK? You know what that means? Double income, no kids. That's the new statement of the day, DINK. On the way here, we were talking about it, and my son said, I just saw a sign. It said, eat, drink, and DINK. You know what that is? That's a culture that's leaving God out of the equation. Leaving God out. People are satisfying themselves rather than seeking to please the Lord. But we need to seek the Lord. And so the best investment is when we listen to Jesus. That's the best investment of life. Listening to Jesus. Having faith in Jesus. Believing the Lord. And so we find in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. And so this is investing in in heaven. That's what we're talking about. A right sense of values. And so Colossians chapter 3. If ye be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. 
And so seeking God, seeking his will, his presence, his empowerment. This is what we're to do. Draw nigh unto God. Draw close to God. We need to value spiritual things. Value spiritual things over temporal things. You say, I've heard that all my life. We need to apply it. Apply it. Believe it. Believe it. And so, though you already know it, we need to believe it. Jesus said in Matthew 13, let's just turn over there. We're going to look at a few more verses here. In Matthew 13 and verse 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. Who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. The rarest pearls are not from an oyster. You know what they're from? A sea snail. And some of these, they're pale yellow to orange in color. Some of these pearls are estimated as much as $180,000 to $250,000. The most valuable pearls are from the South China Sea. Now, I don't know if this is why China wants the South China Sea, but there are very valuable pearls there. One of the rarest of all is a black pearl. They say that you only find one black pearl in 10,000. You know, Jesus is the fairest of 10,000. He's the pearl of great price. There's another pearl called the Akanya pearl. And this is also in the South China Sea. And uh, they're the largest and the rarest. But you know how to tell a real pearl from a fake pearl? You take the pearl and you rub it on your teeth. And if you feel a little grit on your teeth, which I've never done, but I, I just read this, I don't have a pearl, but it makes me want to get a pearl. Get one for my wife. But if you take that pearl and you put it on your teeth, you feel that grit, you know you have a real pearl. You know, the Bible says, taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. You see, Jesus is real. And what he offers us is real. But the world's most expensive pearl is said to be worth a hundred million dollars. And this, this man in the Philippines was fishing and he threw his anchor out and he got a hold of this huge uh, oyster. I mean, some of these oysters are huge. And he, he pulled that oyster up and inside, just shaped on the inside of that oyster was one magnificent pearl. They said it weighed 75 pounds, two foot long and one foot wide. And uh, Google said it's, it's um, if it's authenticated, this is the way they said, it would be worth $100 million. That's a lot of money for a pearl. But did you know when you accept Jesus, you've got one that's way more valuable than the most valuable pearl you could ever get your hands on. And serving the, the Lord Jesus, this is the wisest investment of life. And so, if you're saved, you have a more valuable pearl than the world could ever know. And that's the pearl of great price. The Lord Jesus Christ. And your wisest investment of life is to follow Jesus. I believe that. Following Jesus. Even in the end of the end of the age, if we're there, I don't know if we're there, but if we are, even in the end of the end of the age, following Jesus. 
Telling people about the Lord. Accepting him if we've never accepted him. Now that fisherman in the Philippines, he, uh, he took that big pearl. And if this is true, he took that pearl, this big two foot pearl, one foot wide. I mean, shaped like the inside of an oyster. I mean, this thing is just one solid pearl. You can pull it up. He took that. You know what he did with it? He hid it under his bed. And for 10 years, that's where it was. And he would go out and he'd take his pearl. He didn't think it was really worth a whole lot. I, I don't know why. But he hid it under his bed and he'd put his hand on it before he went fishing for good luck. But here he had something of great value. It's under his bed. Now we sing a song. Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm going to let it shine. And so... I'm just trying to encourage y'all. Let's keep the vision. Let's not forget the Lord Jesus and serve at him. No matter what you've given up is well worth it. Way more than the richest man with the greatest value. When you know the Lord Jesus and you're serving him. It's like the song. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Than be a king of a vast domain. And so, serving the Lord Jesus. And so today, we find that the Lord Jesus is everything. So don't feel your investment in Jesus isn't worth it. Don't ever feel that way. Your stewardship isn't worth it. Investing in things eternal those treasures that you're laying up in heaven. Because God said he'll give us a crown and we can cast it at Jesus' feet if we're faithful. And when we're there in heaven at the judgment seat, there won't be anything more important than that. And so winning souls, investing in the saints, laying up treasure in heaven, you see, we have an anchor, and it's hooked to the greatest pearl of great price, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's the one that gives us the right sense of values. And he's the one that we want to serve, not just for a while, but for our whole duration of life. So you take your last breath, serve Jesus. Amen. Serving Jesus. And that's, that's what we want to do, the Bach family. We want to serve the Lord. Because in 1980, I accepted the Lord Jesus as my Savior, and he gave me a life. And I owe him everything. I owe him my life. I owe him everything. My wife and I got, got married. Uh, we said, Lord, we, we'd like to have a family. We'd like to give that family to you. You know why? Because he's the pearl of the greatest price, the Lord Jesus Christ. So our young people are going to come. They're going to sing. Maybe um, you're here and, and you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior. Well, I can't think of a better time than now to accept the Lord Jesus. He loves you. He died for you. He was buried. He rose again. And he has all power to change our life and change our destiny from hell to heaven when we accept him. Maybe you're here and you need to rededicate yourself. Maybe you're losing the joy of service and the vision of the judgment seat and the value of serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Or well, they're going to sing a song, I have decided to follow Jesus. And as they sing, maybe you want to come just like when you got saved. You came and you accepted him and you made a profession. Well, you know, we need to make a profession. I've decided to follow Jesus. And so they're going to sing a song. And if you want to come this, this evening, you need to come. You need to pray. Maybe uh, you want to get saved. This is the time to do that as these young people sing. So they're, I'm going to pray and then they're going to sing. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this day. I pray that 
and take your word and encourage our hearts this evening. And Lord, we thank you for your goodness. And Lord, I pray that you bless this song and uh, the invitation. In Jesus' name, amen. Follow Jesus. Maybe you need to renew your dedication to the Lord. Join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. No turning back. care of that. The world You're not saved. You can come forward. Somebody take a Bible and show you how you can receive Jesus. You can call on Him and receive Him as your Savior. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow no turning back, no turning back. Amen. Amen. 732 in the blue hymnal. <clears throat>